Hi there, I'm Janine of Liandi CGI and this time I'm going to show you how to create this effect of flowing lines. I got asked by one of the members of my online community um, how to create this effect that he saw by another artist, this guy Mike Campo. Uh, he made this series of really cool uh, speaker and headphone uh, renders. And judging by the screenshots, he was using Modo. I have no idea how to do this in Modo. I've never used Modo. But I'm going to try to recreate this uh, using Blender. So this project already has a bunch of lights, um, a background plane and uh, a camera. And I'm using Cycles as the render engine. So all I have to add now is the uh, curve for the flowing lines. So I'm going to start by using uh, by adding a Bezier curve. I'm going to make this a little bigger. I rotate it. Just going to make it visible here. I'm going to go into edit mode to be able to adjust the points. I'm going to select both points and just subdivide it to add another point in the middle. And now what we can do is, well, leave edit mode first of all. And then go to these uh, object data properties for the curve. And here, do an extrude to make it a flat uh, shape. And well, now we have to go back into edit mode. Maybe rotate this uh, to straighten it out a bit. Uh, let's move it around a little. Now I'm going to open the end menu using the end key on my keyboard. In here under item, you've got uh, several settings that affect the points of a curve. I'm going to start with this point here. First of all, we've got the radius, which makes our shape uh, wider or less wide. And then we've also got the tilt, which can twist our shape. So let me adjust the radius and the tilt for all these points and hopefully end up with something nice looking. Right. Just need to move the light source a little bit there, I think. Which one is it? This one. All right. Now we've got a problem. We don't have enough subdivisions and the shading looks absolutely horrible. So what we can do now is under the object data properties, under resolution preview U, we can turn up the subdivisions in here, but as you can see, that doesn't solve the problem. And why is that? That's because we've got all these uh, thin stretched, um, well, thin and now also twisted polygons. And twisting polygons, um, thin polygons is not a good idea. So let's set this back to 12. I've got a better plan. Let's in fact add a Pino shut up. Let's in fact add a subdivision surface modifier. And what we can do now is well, let me turn off the optimal display so we can actually see it. And close the end menu. Now I'm adding more subdivisions here for the viewport. And as you can see, that completely solves the shading issue. The, the other shading that's caused by the light sources. And I'm casting shadows. I'm going to set the render subdivisions to four as well. And there we go. Now let's try to get this into a nice shape. Because you see, you want to make sure your polygons are as square as possible. These aren't really squares either, but uh, it's better than uh, having them all stretched out along the width here. Because if you're deforming a surface, you want to make sure you have as many polygons as needed and have them be as square as possible. 
doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah, you get the idea, I hope. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to try uh, tilting and maybe scaling using the radius to get this uh, looking a bit interesting. Every time I try this, it looks completely different in the end, so uh, I hope we get something nice. It's pretty random. It's kind of uh, abstract art, you see. Let's make this bigger. Ooh, that's cool. All right, let's, uh, let's go with that. Let's leave edit mode again. Now we need the shader for the uh, lines flowing along the surface. For that, I'm going to go into the shading uh, workspace. I'm going to turn on the render view. And with the Bezier curve selected, I'm going to add a new material. I'm just going to call it um, Flowing Lines. And I'm going to add an image texture now. Um, so you want to have an image texture, basically sort of a gradient that stretches along the flow of the curve. All you need is actually just a thin strip. So I just picked a random image from Unsplash and selected just a thin strip here at the start and then I cropped it in Photoshop and I saved that. Now I'm going to load this. I'm going to press Ctrl T if you have the Node Wrangler plugin enabled. By pressing Ctrl T, Blender automatically adds a, an image texture and these two nodes, which we don't need, so I'm going to delete them. But now I can open this texture that I made earlier. As you can see, it is now stretched nicely along the flow of the curve because the automatically generated UV coordinates nicely flow along this shape. Oh, it's perfect. And now what I need is... Um, an alpha texture to make sure that these are actually uh, transparent uh, lines. Right now it's pretty solid, even if it looks a little, uh, even if it looks a little nice already, but it's uh, still not transparent. So I'm going to add a noise texture. I'm going to plug the factor into the uh, alpha input of my material. And again, using Node Wrangler, I can press Ctrl Shift and click on the noise texture that adds a viewer node so we can see the output of just the noise texture. And let me just check my notes what I have to do now. Right, next step is to add the missing uh, mapping nodes because we want to make sure that this noise texture is also using the UV coordinates to make it flow along the shape. So I have the noise texture selected and press Ctrl T. That'll add the missing uh, mapping nodes. And now changing this one here to UV, plug the UV outputs in the vector. And now the trick is to just set the scale on X to zero. Now we've got a uh, black and white noise uh, flowing along the shape. Now we just have to tweak that. So first of all, let me get rid of the viewer node by pressing Ctrl Shift and clicking on the principal BSDF shader again. Um, so now, first of all, I'm going to add a color ramp. Oops, color ramp. Plug this in between here, because now I can use these uh, color handles to increase the contrast of this noise uh, texture to make the uh, difference between solid and transparent more obvious. And now we can play with the scale to increase the amount of lines we're getting. And using the color ramp, we can make more or less lines. This is pretty cool already now. All right, so I'm going to increase the scale to, let's say, 100. You can also maybe play with the detail, although the detail doesn't seem to make a difference at all. And there we go. Now we've already got the lines. Let me just go back to layout. 
Let's see if we can play with the shapes some more. Get something completely different maybe. Just tilt this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so by just adjusting the radius and the tilt of all these points, you can make completely uh, different and random flowing lines for your product renders or whatever else you want to use them for. And Pinus still won't shut up, unfortunately. Oh well. And that's it. That's how you can create the flowing lines effect. And this is one I made earlier. And here's a free little extra tip for you. You can actually turn this into a really cool motion graphics effect by animating it. If you go to the start and end mapping uh, drop down, fold thingy. And here you can drag the end value left and right to animate the curve. To make the lines appear or disappear. And animate the factor starts to well, make them disappear at the other end. So that's uh, pretty cool. I'm sure you can imagine the potential that it has for motion graphics, right? And I mentioned my online community earlier, so why not come and join as well? It's a great place to find other people like you and to ask questions and get your Blender problem solved. And I may even make a tutorial like this one to answer your questions. This is the link to the community. Um, I'll be putting it in the description as well, of course. I'll also put the link to this uh, Blender project in the description so you can download it and check out how I set up the lighting, for example. And if you found this video useful, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Until next time, bye bye!